Hey, this is a tutorial uh, that shows how to use the p5play library for p5.js, uh, which is a library for making games with p5. And um, this, this demo is going to be how you can make a game that sort of relies on you dragging and dropping things around in the game. And uh, the kind of classic thing and something that uh, several of my students are trying to do, I think, is something similar to like a, a dress up game or a, a paper doll game where you put items onto another item. So I've got a few images here. Let's take a look at them. Um, in my assets folder, I've got a dress with a transparent background, a jacket with a transparent background, and I have this big image that's a JPEG that is kind of um, basically just missing the, ja the jacket and the dress. I kind of stole those from that image. So let's get rid of that and uh, just try and uh, look at what's here so far. There's a preload function and I load uh, the three images into three variables and just thinking ahead I've got a jacket variable and a dress variable that I'm going to use to store sprites for those um, two things. So I, I made the canvas the same size as the background image which is called original here and uh, I think all I should have to do is display that image um, as the background. So Here's the name of the variable and where I want to put it. So there we go. I've got the background in place. Now I'm going to put the uh, jacket there, but it's going to be not just an image, but a sprite. So I'm going to say the jacket is a new sprite. Uh, uh, sprite. And I'm going to associate the image that I loaded above with that sprite. is it's already on the screen it's given it a default location which i guess is maybe the middle of the screen uh, but i think i want to position in a certain place so i'm going to do jacket position equals and you'd think uh well how does it how does this work is it a number it's not a number it's an x and a y so we have a convenient thing in p5 or in in um well, in p5 that we can use called a vector and that's basic it sounds scary but it's basically just a way to store and access to numbers at the same time for us so an x and y position like a coordinate works um, with a vector so i will create a vector and it's just going to be two numbers x and y and i think for the jacket 900 and 500 works well so i'll just save again and i might have to scroll over i'll move this a bit for now so now i can see there's the jacket where it belongs and um I'll stick with that for now and not deal with the dress. Um, let's try and make this thing draggable since that's kind of the main goal here. So the first thing to do is, uh, this is actually kind of from the, uh, we're gonna do jacket. This is kind of from the uh, P5 Play Learn website. It's got an, an example there. So each uh, sprite has its own mouse uh, property and we can call a dragging method on it. So if uh, jacket.mouse.dragging uh, is true, then we want to do something. And I think right now I'll just do a console log and say dragging the jacket. Let's see what this looks like. So if I hold down the mouse and move it, you can see it's spitting out a ton of dragging the jackets. And when I let go, it stops. It's not actually moving the jacket, but it does know that I'm trying to drag it. So instead of doing this, let's actually move the jacket. And that should just be... Um, jacket dot move towards and this is a function that just takes three arguments it's where you want to move it to so if for example i said zero zero and that's the x and y and then the last argument is going to be one which means it's going to move it right there if i put less than one there it'll move slower so you can get a sense that what we're going to do is move it with the mouse instead of moving it to this point we'll move it with the mouse and if i put a number like 0.1 or 0.5 or something it'll follow the mouse like it'll track the mouse really slowly so if i start wiggling around it will uh, kind of not really do those wiggles it'll it'll average out so um, let's see what this looks like i'll save when i start dragging it it zips over there so instead of making it zip over there let's have it follow the mouse cursor so this is mouse x and mouse y and then that last uh parameter which is kind of how quickly it will track the mouse so let's see there we go 
it's working. Now that's it's kind of flying around. Let me reload. Uh, sort of like can throw it. And I think you know if we add a drag to that jacket, it'll probably slow it down. So I'll say its drag is ten. And let's try now. I can throw it, and it kind of throws a little bit, which is sort of nice. Nice that we have that, but it's not going to go out of control. So this is working, dragging it and letting it go. In the example, there is a little bit more detail to this, which is to add the uh, mouse X of the uh, jacket and the mouse Y. And as far as I can tell, you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference in this case, but it's essentially this value, jacket.mouse.x, is the mouse location in relation to, I think, the center of the sprite. So it's trying to accommodate for the fact that you might be dragging it from the corner. You can see when I click from the corner, it zips to the middle of the, the dress. So that's kind of convenient. Uh, well, actually, that, I didn't even save. So let's try that again. Ah, okay, so now it doesn't do that jumping. So before I had that extra addition in there, it would jump the cursor, uh, it would jump to wherever the cursor is, right to the center, but this allows it to actually drag without um, having that little weird jitter. So let's stick with that. Um, okay, what else do I need to do? Uh, well, the main thing is I need to make sure, you know, I can put it here, but what I really want to do is say when it lands there, I want to acknowledge that she's wearing the jacket. And I'd like also, if I get close, I want the jacket to sort of snap into place. So let's see if we can make that happen. This is totally separate. So this is like uh, handle the dragging and then totally separate from that, we're going to uh, snap into position. So if, uh, and for this, we're going to use a function from P5 called dist. And this function takes an X and Y and another X and Y. And it tells you the difference uh, in pixels between those two positions. So what I really want to know is like the jackets X and Y, what's the difference between that position and um, kind of the the heart of this doll right so i want this to i want to know how far this point is from this point and and you know whatever those numbers are i'm going to say if it's less than a certain amount then we can say that she's wearing the jacket that's just going to get logged to the console so um how do we what do, numbers do we put in here well we i think uh what I can do is make a variable that will actually contain that and I'll, I'll call it doll center and I'll set it up right here in the setup function. I'll say doll center equals and again I'm going to create a vector. And I think what I found is that the center was like around 133 and 420. So that's like here. Um, if you ever want to check this, you know, try and find these locations, one easy thing to do is just draw a little rectangle at that point and you'll see, you know, oh, okay, it's matching up. So if I drew a rectangle at this uh, position, we'd see that it's right there in the center of the doll. So I'm going to use that vector now. And uh, it's really, the, you know, the way that we access vectors is just like this, the vector dot X and vector dot Y. So doll center dot X and doll center dot y. So let's see. Um, if I drag it, I don't get any message on the bottom because I got rid of that other console log, but if I drag it close enough to the center of the doll, I should, yeah, there it is. So it's, she's wearing the jacket. So it spits out that message constantly if I'm in that zone. So instead of doing that, again, this is just for debugging. So instead of doing that, what I want to do is make it snap to that position. So I think what I can do is just set the jacket's position to equal the doll's position. Um, that should do it. So let's drag it over there and snap. It snaps into place. So that's kind of nice. Uh, if I drag it off and drag it back, it snaps in. That's a little off. I could fix that, but right now I'm not going to worry about it. Um, well, actually, you know what? I will worry about it. So if it's if it's a little bit off, I could change where the doll's center is, but maybe I've got that right. And I think probably what would happen is as I start putting other things on here, I'd want to basically be able to account for the difference in position and size, right? Even if I put this on, maybe the size is different. So it'll snap on a little bit off from the body. And so what I could do is say, instead of just snapping right to the center of the doll, I could create a new vector here and use the 
doll center dot x and doll center dot y but adjust them a little bit so maybe what it looks like it needs to go to the left a little bit so i'll do minus 10. so let's try this again see if it snaps in a better way yeah it looks better so that's how i could account for that just kind of tweak it a little bit um okay what else do i need to do i think it would be nice if i knew you know if there was like some way to tell which outfit she's wearing so maybe what i'll do is um I'll just do some some like debugging right on the screen. So I'll add some text, and maybe what I'll do is I'll keep a variable and say that there's a variable um, is where is wearing the jacket. So let's define that way at the top is wearing the jacket starts out as false i'll also think ahead and do like an is wearing the dress because maybe i'll get to the dress too so um yeah i just want to say like uh jacket question mark and um i will tack on is wearing the jacket and that i'm going to put at like 10 pixels over and 10 pixels down from the top corner of the screen. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Jacket false. And then when I drag it on, boom, it's true. So let's uh, go a little bit further down. Uh, I think what I would like to do, though, is, you know, like even if I put it on there, it turns to true. If I take it off, it's still true. So I also need an else here. So I guess the way that would work is um, if it's not close to the doll then instead of snapping it should just do one thing which is say is wearing the jacket equals false let's see if that works um, still false now it's true drag it off and now it's false again so seems to work okay um i think i mean that's that's it really like this is this is really kind of where we need to be but i'm gonna also add another uh, sprite in here which is the dress so this should be easy to do here is dress now and it's dress image and where's the location i think i figured this out as 450 and 570 so there's the dress and I should be able to do the same thing I did here for uh, dragging. I will just change this to dress. And I'll also change uh, this to dress. Let's see. Now I can drag this as well. And, you know, it's, it's not snapping because I haven't done that yet. I'm just handling the dragging. So let's go down to the part where I handle the snapping. And I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll copy this and do a dress version of it. And this is a totally separate section, which is like output the outfit status. And uh, just thinking ahead, I probably want one a little bit lower on the screen. That is the dress. And is wearing the dress will have to be another variable set up top yeah so it starts out as false so i'll do the same thing here for snapping into position it will be checking the dresses x and y against the doll center and it will make the dress position equal the doll center we'll have to see if it needs this little adjustment in the x orientation or not and then of course we're going to say that is wearing the dress is true and the same thing here it's going to be false if we're not uh snapping so I'll save, and when I drop it, it says it's true. Jacket's false. Um, it's a little bit off, so maybe maybe I'll take advantage of the fact that I've got this X and Y, and I think it needs to go down a little bit. Let's try it again. Perfect. So a, a neat thing about the fact that we're using P5 Play is that it has physics, so I can actually like bump it out of the way. Now, the spinning is not desirable, so I think what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to say, I could just say jacket dot uh, rotation, what is it called? Uh, 
rotation lock equals true. But instead of doing that for each one of these, what I can do is say that all of the sprites dot rotation lock equals true. And while I'm at it, you know, I don't need to set the drag for for each of these sprites either. I can just say all of the sprites uh, dot drag is equal to 10. So let's get rid of this redundancy here. So um, I'll put the dress on. Looks like it works up there. And then I'll bump it out of the way. <laughs> and uh, and now the jacket is true and the dress is false. Let's try that again because it looked like it bumped it pretty hard. Well, it works. And then you know, I guess I can do it pretty hard. So one thing you notice is that they, it moves the dress whether I'm touching it or not. And that's just because of the way that it's cropped. There are ways to handle that. I'm not going to bother with that right now. That's not the idea of this game. One thing I could do if I didn't want them to interact with each other, I think I could just make them be um, on different layers. Let's see if that works. So layer equals one for the jacket and layer equals two for the dress. Nope, that doesn't work. So I, I'm going to leave this off. I'm, I'm not going to bother worrying about that, but that's something that you could consider if that was important. Um, if you did make that work, then you might have a situation where uh, the dress is on and the jacket's on. But, you know, I think that's actually how this doll, doll paper doll thing is supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to put different items of clothes on. You put the underwear on first and then the dress and then the jacket. So that's a slightly different game. But in this one, I'm just sort of saying that you are only wearing one or the other. So hopefully that all makes sense, and uh, it's not a very long program. Again, just to give the overview, I'm loading all the images for the sprites and the background, and then I'm just creating uh, two sprites, one for the jacket and one for the dress. Uh, they, they have a rotation lock on so that they don't spin all over the place, and then drag keeps them from flying off the screen. And then uh, down here, I do a couple things. One is to handle the dragging part. It's the same for both sprites, but I'm basically saying if someone's dragging on this sprite, then have it follow the cursor and uh, accommodating a little bit for where the cursor is um, grabbing the sprite, right? It's not always gonna be grabbing in the center, so that's what this little adjustment here is for. And then I do the same thing for the dress. Um, then for each of them, I check to see if it's close enough to the center of the doll, and if it is, then it should do a couple things. One is to snap into place, and the other is to set this Boolean variable to true. And um, otherwise, I'm, if I'm out here, it's gonna set that variable to false. I do the same thing for the dress, and then I'm just outputting um, here which which thing is on. So now we can kind of start thinking about the mechanics of this if we wanted to. Can you, are you supposed to wear multiple items or is, is it a certain combination of items that matters? Uh, we'd have all the information we need to be able to make a game like that. So hopefully that helps. Good luck.